Thank you very much, uh, Liz, and to all of you uh, for coming here, uh, and of course to the Scottish PSC for inviting me and, and Catherine. Um, this is a bit of a luxury because over the past two weeks, um, like you, I'm sure, we've been uh, going and organizing one demonstration after the other, and in South Africa, there have been ten, tens of thousands of people in every major city, um, and normally you just have ten minutes uh, to address the masses, and I've been given very generously, I think about an hour uh, to speak, and I assure you I'll try not to use the entire hour, um, although there are many, many things to talk about three nights ago. And I want to thank uh, Sophia and Mick for uh, it's the first night in, in about two, two weeks that I've had a, a full night's rest. Uh, all my responsibilities are on the shoulders of my comrades back home, and they're not very happy about it. Uh, but the only thing that has kept us going this past two weeks is the response of people, the outrage, the anger, the, the urgent need to raise voices, uh, to do something now. Um, and everything we've been trying to build for years has, in a sense, uh, been telescoped into these past few days from an influx of thousands of people who want to be part of the Solidarity Movement to groups, including uh, about a week ago, a group of uh, bikers uh, who approached us uh, uh, wanting to uh, support any activity. So these days on our demonstrations, we have uh, scores of huge people with leather jackets and uh, motorbikes escorting us, and the creativity uh, has been immense. Um, three nights ago, I shared the platform with the General Secretary of Kosatu, Zuelenzima Bavi, the General Secretary of the South African Council of Churches, Eddie McHugh, who the UN uh, General Assembly President that Mick referred to, Father Der Scott of Brockman, referred to in his talk when he emphasized the need for the South African treatment applied to apartheid Israel. I shared the platform with him, um, other faith-based <coughs> leaders, as well as our Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister, who was really hard-pressed to there and then, at this meeting, call for the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador. She did not take that step, but she called the Israeli ambassador to her office in front of the media and lamb-blasted him, which is a step forward. It has not gone as far as what Hugo Chavez did and Evo Morales, but it's some way towards that goal. And at this rally three nights ago, thousands of people chanted, the only course of action is boycott, divestment, sanction." It's a slogan I learned from Canada, Catherine. And viva Hugo Chavez, viva Eva Morales. Those were the most popular slogans. The morning preceding that rally, the Kosatu leadership summons all the affiliates to the headquarters and invited us. And although the Trade Union Federation for many years now has had resolutions condemning Israeli apartheid, calling for sanctions, 
the kind of concrete, meaningful actions flowing from those words has not seen the light of day. And for once, the trade union leadership called this meeting without us prodding them and asked for either the General Secretary or the President of each of their affiliates to account for what they've done to implement the resolutions. For us, therefore, the political will to implement this call that emanates from Palestinian trade unions and civil society and political organizations today can be achieved in meaningful ways. Brother Willie spoke about the workers organized in their union and at the meeting the workers in Nusa, which is uh, Moses Mayakiso belonged to Mao, it's now Nusa in Kasatu, committed themselves in real ways to look at the companies, to look at those companies in South Africa, some of them parastatals, who supply armaments and work on a program of action to stop this from happening. And the day I left to come here, a hundred key shop stewards from around the country in that union convened an emergency meeting and invited the PSC, the organization I belong to, to address them on concrete steps. I have no doubt that this is happening in other countries as well. And the inspirational actions, for example, in Norway, where over 20 cities were literally brought to a standstill in a symbolic protest by the Transport Workers Union in Norway, is a salutary lesson for us and what we can do as well.